club events where every news media outlet shows up makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and nobody's nobody's been shot. That's the best part. That's the best part. Yeah. I know. I know. Right? But I think good news is news too, and that's one of the reasons we're here today. Welcome to a slightly unconventional groundbreaking. 32 floors, several hundred feet above the perimeter in our 285 Georgia Quadrant Interchange. Now, through a marvel and traffic flow to watch every day, this original interchange, I was surprised to learn, was really designed to handle about, about 100,000 trucks and vehicles per day, and it's currently absorbing about four times that volume. Georgia 400 is the gateway to North Georgia. And I-285, as you all know, is a trucking corridor, primary commuting path, as well as primary connector for dozens of lanes along 85, 985. And let's not forget those fabulous hero unit drivers who save us from all kinds of backups every day. Governor Deal understands the need to improve and expedite Georgia's trucking and motor vehicle corridors around Metro Atlanta, as well as across our state. Now, though Governor Deal is officially starting this Transform 285-400 project today, its completion will actually be stewarded along by its successor. And we hope to see him again there for opening day. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Georgia's 82nd governor, Nathan Deal. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you all for being here. I, I know that this is a little unusual to have a groundbreaking inside, but uh, that's all right. The view is worth it. If you haven't already looked, uh, I hope that you will do so. This I-285 and Highway 400 interchange is one of the most congested areas in the United States. And it has certainly been an area that uh, we have had as a priority to try to improve. The but this project is more than just a new interchange. It is the embodiment of many things that I think are good for our state. The models that have been set here, for example, uh, the model of uh, design, build, and finance a portion of the project. Uh, this structure will allow us, this structure of financing and building, will allow us to save approximately $300 million on the cost of this project. And that $300 million can go toward the other major projects, which are a part of our 10-year, $10, $10 billion goal that we've already begun on. The same public-private partnership is also being used on the Northwest Corridor uh, express lane project on I-75, and it has also recognized similar savings. Now, there are a lot of things that you can say about the importance of this project, but I think it also is an indication that we can, we can cooperate. And when we cooperate, we get a lot more things done. And it has been cooperation at every level, from those who are working at the state level and the Department of Transportation, uh, those working at the local and regional levels, uh, they've all come together, and that is a great thing. You're going to hear from some of them here today, uh, and I want to thank all of them. Not all of them that have had major hands in this project are going to be able to speak, but I particularly want to thank uh, the Perimeter Community Improvement Districts. They have been a huge part of not only propelling this project forward, but their $10 million has gone a long way toward helping us make sure this project receives the priority that it has received now. So I think all of you know that this area is a, an area that has about an improvement. Will be a good stamp toward continuing that legacy of superiority. Uh, and I thank all of you who have made it a part of your activities and your time to be here with us today. I certainly want to thank Commissioner McMurray. Uh, he and his team have done a great job. Uh, Jay Roberts and, and his group as well. And, of course, uh, DOT member Mark uh, Burkhalter, who is here, along with many other members of the State Department of Transportation Board. I think we have, quite frankly, the best working relationship between the governor's office, state agencies, and the Department of Transportation that perhaps we have ever had in this state. And that bodes well for not now, but also for the future. So thank you to all of you. So for those of the members of the General Assembly, and I see several who are here today, I would be remiss if I did not thank them. They too 
took bold action in passing House Bill 170, which has provided much of the funding that is available for us to be able to initiate projects such as this one and a very aggressive uh, reconstruction and rebuilding projects of infrastructure all across our state. So to those of you who are here from in more ways than one, thank you. Thank you, Governor. I'd now like to ask the 6th Congressional District Representative on the Georgia Department of Transportation Board to share a few thoughts. Mark Burkhalter is a former state representative, developer, and entrepreneur, and also a senior policy advisor with Denton. Mark left elected office as Speaker Emeritus, having served the Georgia House and his North Fulton County constituents over an 18-year period as House member, Speaker Pro Tem, and House Speaker. Mark also served as administration floor leader in the House with then Governor Sonny Perdue. Mark authored the city charter, which helped create the city of Johns Creek in North Fulton, and has won many honors and accolades for his public service in many arenas prior to joining the GDOT board. Please welcome Mark Burkhalter. Mark. Well, good morning to everybody. I've got my notes here. I just just hope everybody's wearing some comfortable shoes. Uh, I'm going to go over our 39-point plan to reform transportation in Georgia this morning, and uh, hope that half of them and our incredibly professional GDOT employees and staff, and they really are. You know, everybody talks about government employees, and sometimes they get beat up a little bit. The DOT has been known to take a hit or two now and again, but these people are amazing. I'm not thinking that I was going to be the savior to any, any board in the state. But I felt passionately about taking a little time out of my day, out of my week, out of my months, uh, to try to serve and make that happen. I was not going to let us lose our economic momentum. If you think about mobility in this state and the importance of it, um, I've always thought of Georgia having a lot of economic engines. Certainly talk about the airport connects us to the world, our port connects us to the world. Well, Congress Center is the fourth largest uh, convention space in, in the country. Uh, many businesses, Fortune 500 companies. They, there was a P3 law that was passed. Not in the form it is today, but it's the public-private partnership law. And when we did it, we weren't sure what we were doing, honestly. And unfortunately, that P3 tool that we had in a toolbox never really got utilized to solve problems like you see right here at this intersection. But give it to Governor Deal and the General Assembly. They saw that tool as a way of, of solving transportation problems, fast-forwarding the solutions to the betterment of everybody, to, to the quality of life, to commerce, to everything we have and enjoy here in Georgia. And I want to give, and I mentioned that to mention that this tool and Governor Deal and the General Assembly's leadership, which previously was mentioned by the governor, in passing a funding mechanism for, for, for transportation in this state are really the reasons we're here. There are a lot of roadblocks, I know, Governor, to, to, to getting the funding for this project. The federal government didn't even, as you imagine that, didn't have their uh, federal transportation bill finalized. We're kind of shooting in the dark. But we had visionary leaders. And thanks to the governor and, and the General Assembly, they've accelerated this day because had they not done that, we wouldn't be standing around here right now, I'm convinced. Getting almost to the end of my 39 points. But, uh, Governor, I, he's already had a chance to speak. And you and I haven't had a chance to speak much. This room, I want to thank you for your, what I observe is, is and, I, and the people confirm this and work with you on a daily basis, you're steady, you're bold, and you're visionary. And without that kind of leadership, again, we would be set back in Georgia another eight years if we didn't have this governor here for as many years as we had him. So on behalf of everybody in this room, thank you. Okay, so what are we doing here today? Well, there's a little $800 million that we decided to spend down here in this little interchange we're overlooking right now. One of the most congested interchanges in the country, certainly in our, our state. That's not all, though. It's, it's, it's usually exciting. But we have other plans, too. Actually, it's just the beginning of what we're going to see happen to this region and to the 6th District area. We're embarking on one of the most ambitious transportation programs in the nation. 
which includes two other big items that I have to mention. First, we're going to invest, plan to invest $6 billion in a revived 285 program. It's not just 400 is a problem, as you know. It's getting east to west on the north side of the perimeter. We're going to have two lanes on either side of the of, of, four, of, of 285, and hopefully we'll be able to not see those tractor trailers back up at 2 p.m., trying to go down 75 and get over to 85. No small feat right there. That'll be 62 miles of additional lanes that will be added just on 285. Pretty big stuff in itself. And they say all thing, good things come in threes, and they do. To the north of us here, another $2.4 billion in the department and the commissionership we have. This is all collaborative effort, not just with your administration and the General Assembly, but we look forward to, to doing a whole lot more. Not that these three things are, are small items. But uh, I'm excited that this is the same. And, uh, and, and they're being as rest as well, just know that. We're not neglecting anybody. But I'm awfully excited to see this state's commitment in investing in our infrastructure in this state and particularly in this intersection. Can't go without saying about the collaborative effort. The governor mentioned it once again about CIDs, but cities, local communities, and other organizations. Really, you can't do this with just the General Assembly and the GDOT board and the governor. It takes a community effort, and they have certainly been there, stepped up, business people, the organizations they contribute to and self-tax themselves through to make this all happen. I'm going to close with this. There's a lot of people celebrating in Chicago today, <laughs> and rightfully so. They had a little dry run. Um, but uh, I will tell you, they may have won the World Series of Baseball, but I think Georgia today won the World Series of investing in our future and in infrastructure. We led that. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for all you do. It doesn't go without notice that the, this all started when times were pretty bad. You guys, uh, state leadership, uh, you deserve a tip of the hat for being forward, looking to help make this happen at the depth of one of the worst recessions this generation has ever seen. And I don't know if you know this, that we complain a lot about the traffic, but we have a Department of Transportation that somehow or other finds a way to keep the road open in big projects like this. Lots of other places just shut it down. Russell McMurray, on behalf of the motoring public, of which I am one, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Georgia Department of Transportation Commissioner Russell McMurray joins us now with the scope and breadth of this project. Russell, bring us up today. Russell McMurray. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much, Scott. I am very excited because I've been sitting and you've been standing. I'm just kidding. This is a great day I'm very excited about for the ceremonial groundbreaking. And getting to this day from the agency side, from the Department of Transportation, it's been hard work, let me tell you. But there's been many partnerships, as we've already heard about, that has lightened the load because it is truly takes those partnerships to deliver anything of this magnitude and to make it happen. And again, thank you, Governor Neal, for your investment in transportation infrastructure and your dedication and commitment for seeing that through and shepherding that through the legislature, as well as thank you to the legislature for making transportation infrastructure investment possible, because our best days are ahead indeed. The State Transportation Board, Mark Barkhalter, thank you for those kind words and for the words of all our board members who support this project. It is a, a not regional significance, but statewide significance of how important this project of 285 and 400 is. And it really is amazing, the partnership. And I want to elaborate just a little bit on the partnerships to give a little bit of the breadth and scope of what it takes to pull this kind of effort together. Starting with our public sector partners, this project has federal funds in it. And the Federal Highway Administration, our division director, administrator here, Rodney Berry, is here from the Georgia Division. And without the Federal Highway's partnership to work collaboratively to accelerate a project of this magnitude, in size and scope and scale is just amazing. So we thank them. Also from the public city uh, sector is the city of Sandy Springs, obviously being right here at your doorsteps, right here in the city, in their commitment. And obviously the state Roll, road and tollway authority who makes the P3, the public-private partnership mechanism available for us to use 
as the Department of Transportation to enter contracts that go multiple years. It takes that strong partnership. From the nonprofit sector, a PATH Foundation, who partnered with Sandy Springs, and Sandy Springs bringing $200 million, $2 million, $2 million to advance PATH 400, the multi-use trail through two intersecting freeways, folks. I don't know where else in the country that happens where there is a multi-use trail that connects between freeways that where 285 is that river divide that keeps pedestrian, recreational traffic, and bike traffic from being able to cross freely. This project will do that because of Sandy Springs and PATH coming forward to say, let's figure out how to make that work. And we did. From the private sector, as already been noted, Perimeter Community Improvement District is amazing. PCID, the effort that they have to bring $10 million not to sit there and complain about what are you going to do, but you came with what can we do, how can we help accelerate this. And I have to reflect and sort of take a little bit of a history lesson here because we have to go back to where this project originally was identified back in the t Sploss days, back in that referendum in 2012, of which we know its fate was not good. But there was one thing that happened upon the when that referendum did not was not successful here, uh, Yvonne Williams with the PCID kept the ember alive and almost met with us immediately to say, what can we do to advance this project? What can be done? And I happened to see our former planning director, Toby Carr, here, the governor's appointee to uh, be the GDOT planning director. And we started at that time saying, what can we do? And all we could figure out was to do some incremental little improvements that would have may have been a band-aid at best. And we just kept trying and trying, and, and the CID said, well, what can we do? Can we bring money? And we said, of course, bring some money. That always helps. But we've been able to leverage that. Now that $10 million has leveraged the total project cost of almost $800 million, which is fantastic. But it's that partnership. And through that partnership and the way we're able to leverage that was to look back, as, as Mark Burkhalter said, to look into the public-private role to see how we could design, build, and finance this project, which is very much like you paying a mortgage on your house. So we're able to get the benefit of having the project underway and open to the public much sooner than if we had to wait and collect all our money to come up with $800 million to buy the project. Now, as a reminder, to put this in perspective, because as Governor Deal came into office, the referendum was already scheduled for vote. As we know, the, the success here in the metro Atlanta was not good. But if it had passed, this project that we're breaking ground on today was scheduled for the year of 2021, folks. So we're accelerated from what it would have been if it had passed on the referendum. I call that, you know, thank God for an unanswered prayer, maybe, that we got it done sooner. A special thanks to our GDOT team. I can't tell you the countless number of professionals, men and women, that worked very hard to bring this day together. From our innovative program delivery office, Joe Carpenter, Beryl Van Meter, Marlo Flowers, Butch Welch, Chip Meats, and our consultant team that we relied on, who consists of Arcadis, Kimley Horn, Michael, Michael Baker, and of course, HNTB. Without that partnership, we wouldn't be here today. We thank them for that. As Mark Burkhalter mentioned about the other projects. I call this project the center puzzle piece. If you lay the center puzzle piece down on the table, that's what 285-400 is, because this begins to move the needle on regional mobility. I've often said that 285 and 400 is that valve. What happens here affects 75 to the north. If you live in Cobb, you know that. It affects our folks like me that go up 85 into Gwinnett and everything around 285, what happens behind us. So let's talk about what do you get for the return on this project. It's amazing that today there's 63 hours, 63,000 hours wasted every day for people sitting in congestion. If you turn that into an eight hour work day, that's the equivalent of 7,800 people losing a full eight hour work day because they're sitting in congestion. Well, what we forecast for when this project opens to traffic, that each commuter coming through this project of 285-400 will get eight hours of their life back in a year. 
That's tremendous. You get a full work day back because congestion is that much reduced. And that cuts 20,000 hours of a delay out of the total trips of everybody passing through the intersection. I guess the better way to monetize that for what does 20,000 hours less of delay and inconvenience is every day, that turns into over $115 million a year of real income that goes back into people's pockets because they're not sitting there wasting fuel and wasting time and not being productive. And I think if we think about this interchange behind us and all the traffic that moves through it, I like to think about it in this one tidbit. In one day, in one day, there's more people that pass through this interchange than all the population of Wyoming, not including Buffalo. So it's amazing to think about how many people pass by us each and every day. And in fact, part of the return on investment is even better than that because a study done by the PCID shows that in the first 10 years after the project is complete, that the increase in gross regional product to this perimeter area is about $90 million of positive impact. That's again, positive for the economy. That's the kind of things that help keep Georgia the number one place to do business by making that happen. And that will support over 30, uh, 3,700 new jobs in the perimeter area in about the same 10 year period. So it really has a big benefit for transit. Obviously for the MARTA, for the MARTA buses that use this for service in and out of the MARTA stations, and especially our Greta Express buses that travel up and down 400, they will all see a transit benefit because they're not going to be stuck in traffic. And that's going to be a big, big impact. Also, thanks to the PCID and the companies and corporations that are already using shuttles to shuttle around this area. And that's going to become even more important as construction gets underway. And I can tell you that we have a strong partnership and conversations going on now with Marta, Greta, and the CID about how, again, we can have more focus on transit trips in and out of the area for while this construction goes on. So thank you for everybody's participating in that. Now, getting to where we are today, just about a year ago, a little bit less than a year ago, we signed the contract and gave the notice to proceed to North Perimeter Contractors. And those are the, that's the design build team, design build finance team that's going to deliver this project. So here's what's next that you can expect. Is since we break ground today, between now and February, you'll see some minor impacts to traffic. Some work going on, some minor work. But the bulk of the work really starts in the, in the February. And that's probably pretty good because of Christmas traffic and holiday traffic. We're going to have a lot of major interruptions. You'll see some minor work going on. But what you can expect is starting to work on the Mount Vernon overpass bridge replacement. You can expect to see work on Abernathy interchange at 400, which becomes a divergent diamond interchange. Uh, does it match the Ashworth Dunwoody one, the first in the state? And that will be an early win. To make that interchange work better will be an early win. And you'll also see work along the 400 roadway, the northbound lanes of 400, to build new and additional lanes off to the side. So as we go forward, we're going to ask everybody to pardon our progress. The cones that you see in front of us today, get ready to see lots and lots more cones. Again, this is a great example of how the, the public-private partnership through design, build, and finance uses innovation in design and innovation in finance that accelerates this project and brought it in under budget. So as I said before,